Scenes of panic outside the school this afternoon. An unbelievably catastrophic day. 17 are dead. Politicians who sit in their Senate seats funded by the NRA telling us nothing could have ever been done to prevent this. We call BS. The student-led protest following the Parkland shooting promised to change the gun debate. We will not stop until we get gun control. But whether this moment signals a new era may depend on remembering another fight over gun control three decades before, one that also began with a horrific shooting. The White House has confirmed now, just in the last few minutes, that President Reagan has indeed been shot. We understand also that James Brady, the White House press secretary, was among those injured. The president has a gunshot wound in the uh, left side of the chest. He is in stable condition. Uh, Jim Brady has been shot. It is a head wound. We have no information on his condition. The attempted assassination of President Reagan occurred at a time when gun violence seemed inevitable and out of control. Month after month, year after bloody year, it continues. There is a one in five chance that you or a member of your family will be attacked or threatened by someone with a handgun. The National Rifle Association stood in opposition to strengthening existing gun laws. Gun control really is a waste of, of taxpayers' time and a diversion of, of efforts that should be put elsewhere in very productive uh, pursuits. Then, just four years after the shooting of Jim Brady, his wife Sarah saw that the NRA was pressuring Congress to make it easier to own and sell firearms. Sarah was shocked when she learned that the NRA was going to be trying to weaken the country's existing gun laws. It was clear that the laws needed to be stronger, not weaker. She picked up the phone and she called the NRA and she said, you're gonna have to contend with me. In 1987, working with gun control advocate Gail Hoffman, Sarah Brady began a campaign for background checks to make it harder for guns to fall into the hands of felons and others already prohibited from owning them. The bill's proposed week-long waiting period will give local police time, time to run background checks on handgun purchasers, to reduce the number of persons with a history of criminal activity or mental illness who buy handguns over the counter every year. They called it the Brady Bill. I firmly believe that if a reasonable waiting period and provision for background checks had been in effect when John Hinckley walked into that Dallas pawn shop, my husband Jim would be spending his days pursuing a successful career and in his spare time climbing trees with our eight-year-old rather than in hours of painful and rigorous physical therapy. We had the Republicans and the Democrats against us when we first began this fight. My own congressman, uh, then Barney Frank, um, not too soon after, uh, wrote an editorial that liberals needed to abandon gun control. People were not willing to touch the bill with a 10-foot pole. I ran NRA's grassroots efforts in 1991 against the Brady Bill. One of the things we told members was that this was as the uh, proponents claim, just a first step. Is the Brady Bill then merely a first step? It's only a, a first step. This is only the first step. That is the first step. This is the first step. Well, I think the Brady Bill is a good step. Long it may guns. not be the end. There may be other things that will happen later. Charlie Schumer said all the time, this is a first good step. Well, if this is the first good step, better to prevent the first good step than have to fight over the last bad step. We sent out messages into uh, districts where a, co a congressman was wavering. When you start getting, you know, 3,000 phone calls and no other work can be achieved, you know, you get the message. These people are going to be around in November. But the Bradys had their own message. We were not gun grabbers. Jim owned guns. Uh, Sarah grew up around guns. My husband's family in Tennessee, whenever we'd visit them, we'd go shooting. 
We made very clear to members of Congress that we did not support a ban on handguns. We didn't support a ban on long guns. This is about making sure that bad guys uh, don't get them. The Brady Bill's focus, passing a background check, seemed a reasonable measure to many organizations that had long supported the NRA, including law enforcement. Mr. Chairman, how many more police officers need to be killed before this government decides to get serious about this problem? How many more citizens have to be maimed? How many more body bags need to be filled before all of us say enough is enough? Very, very pleased to have both of you as witnesses here in, uh, in an unusual bit of testimony here today. Jim Brady. Just by seeing him and seeing what had happened to him, they saw right before them the results of a gun in the wrong hands without a background check. There are some who oppose a simple seven-day waiting period for handgun purchases because it would inconvenience gun dealers. Well, I guess I'm paying for their, inconven their convenience. I don't question the rights of responsible gun owners. That's not the issue. The issue is whether the John Hinckley's of the world should be able to walk into a gun store and purchase a handgun instantly. It was very difficult for members of Congress to say, yes, I believe a convicted felon should be able to walk into a gun store and walk out with a handgun. After nearly seven years of congressional battles, the Brady Bill was signed into law. The Brady campaign did a very good job of selling the bill, and over time, it didn't seem like such an imposition on gun owners. So much so that even though when I was still at NRA, we opposed it, by the time I got to the industry, I could see a lot of good things coming out of the Brady Bill. The following year, the NRA suffered a second defeat when Congress passed the assault weapons ban which outlawed several kinds of semi-automatic rifles and high-capacity magazines. People were euphoric, and they thought that, that anything could be done, that the NRA um, could be defeated, and they moved forward with legislative packages that went way beyond what anybody had been talking about in the past and really didn't have a snowball's chance. The NRA was able to jump on this, and they were able to go back to members of Congress and say, see, this is what they wanted all along. For the NRA, the losses became a rallying cry. We haven't been winning on Capitol Hill. Is a Brady Bill a win? Armor-piercing bullet ban a win? Is a ban on gun ownership for people convicted of minor domestic violence misdemeanors a win? If that's winning, what do we call losing? 97 to 2, the Senate of the United States voted for that domestic violence gun ban. Tragedy. We've got to start winning, and we must win consistently, and we must stop this erosion of the Second Amendment. When the gun rights community was looking down the barrel, pun intended, of those two losses, they doubled down. So as uh, we set out this year to defeat the divisive forces that would take freedom away. I want to say those fighting words from my cold, dead hands. And what was the result? All the wins in the latter part of the 1990s, right into the 2000s, right till now. It's been almost 25 years since the Brady Bill became law. And with the assault weapons ban allowed to lapse, it remains the last major piece of federal gun control legislation passed in the United States. If we gave up after our loss the first time on the Brady Bill, I can't even imagine what would have happened. Joaquin Oliver. Joaquin went by the nickname Guac and was interested in football, basketball, and hip hop. This one is for Joaquin. There is a responsible middle, and that is what is critical even today, that people understand that nobody is going to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. 
Guns are a symbol of so many other things. Positive, negative, but they're symbols. Gun owners see a picture of a gun, and they see all sorts of positive American values. Freedom, independence, interdependence. When anti-gun people see the same gun, they see dissolution in the streets, shootings in our schools, all sorts of negative things. So we're two societies coming at the gun issue with completely different orientations. And it almost prevents us from day one having an intelligent conversation about what the problem is, what the issues are, and what the potential solutions could be.